It's the most wonderful time of the year, the summer of preaching. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Oh yeah, they're coming. Somebody can testify that I desire to be reckless, but my worship requires me to be disciplined. I, I build, start building, our finances start fleeing when it seems as if we don't have any hope. We have an elder brother. Job says here tonight that I was able to reframe and get a new perspective, first of all, on God's awareness. That's why you want to connect, and that's why you want to converse, because he has some stuff that he wants to say to you that no one else can tell you. One thing that you experience in healing is that you can never go back to the way life was before you were healed. We've got George Parks, Dr. Arthur Jackson III, Jerry Carter, Wayne Lomax, and closing us out, Dr. Ralph Douglas West. It's the summer of preaching, five sizzling Thursday nights this summer at Hopewell St. John's, 1351 Roberts Road. You're gonna be blessed. Hey friend, I'm Gary Williams, senior pastor of Hopewell Church. Listen, my pops taught me something some years ago. And he said that the sun, when you dress up and look better, you often feel better. I'm asking barbers and beauticians to register to help us to help young people look better so they can feel better. Listen, on August the 13th from noon to 4.30 p.m. here at our Mandarin campus, we're gonna be offering haircuts and hairstyles for kids in the community who need it the most. Those kids who are dealing with abject poverty, let's be a blessing to them, but we need you to help us to help them. And so we're gonna have a special service on that day, a very short service, but we need barbers and beauticians to volunteer your time on that day to be a blessing to young people. So I look forward to working with you to help undergird and build up our youth. Good evening, Hopewell, how are you this evening? Good evening, Hopewell. How are you this evening? I know it's been a long week, but thank God for bringing us safely this evening. Amen. Did you come to praise the Lord tonight? Got Dr. Jerry Carter tonight. Amen. Our worship leader is Darian tonight. Did you come to praise the Lord tonight? Come on and put your hand on it. Make a joyful noise in the house. Amen. Well, it is truly good to see you. It's good to be seen. We want to welcome you to Hopewell Church. This is week four of our summer of preaching. We are one church in two locations where the Word of God is changing lives. It is our prayer that you experience Jesus Christ in a very real way this evening. Amen. Come on and put a hand on it. Amen. Amen. We'll do our scripture of the week and then we'll go into a word of prayer. Let us begin. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. Psalm 34 and 8. And the church said, Amen. Father, we are thankful that you brought us to really the close of another week. You brought us through safely. Father, with all that we've seen this week, all that we experienced, Father, we thank you that you still hold us in the palm of your hand. Father, we thank you that you are righteous and you are holy. Father, we know that we're experiencing a heat wave all over, but you said you caused the sun to shine on the just and the unjust, the rain to fall on the righteous and the wicked. So, Father, we thank you. Even in this heat wave, we want to experience a wave of praise and worship because you are the one that's keeping us. So, Father, we ask that you just have your way in this service. Ask that you move by the way that you move. Father, we ask you to touch who needs to be touched. Father, we ask you to heal who needs to be healed. Father, we ask that your voice speaks to who needs to hear it. Father, we ask that you to have your way. Touch a manservant. Dr. Jerry Carter, Father, you know him, you made all about him. We ask you to stand up in him and use him mightily this evening that we may be charged, challenged, and changed. Father, we ask you to bless his family, bless his ministry. And Father, we pray that you would give him safe travels. Father, we pray for our senior pastor, Dr. Ray Williams Sr. Father, you have surely blessed hope with the jewel of a man. Father, we pray for his family in its entirety. Pray that you can to keep him in all his ways. Everything he stretches his hands out to do in righteousness. Father, we pray that you would touch. Father, we pray for the praise team. We pray for a spirit of worship tonight. We give you the praise, honor, and glory, knowing that someone today will walk out of darkness into your marvelous light. When it's all said and done, we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray that the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen, Hope Will.
with us. Come on, if you come to bless his name. Make that declaration tonight. I will praise his name. Oh, I'll praise your name. Your holy name. I'll praise your name. Your holy name. I'll praise your name. Not just today. Your name. 
Would you give the Lord a hand of praise? Come on. Give me a little bit of light so I can see a little bit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You know, when you get old, when you turn 60, your eyes don't adjust as quick as they used to. Matter of fact, turn the lights up a little bit, and then you can turn them back down. There, yeah, give me some more. Give me some more. Season people. There it is. Oh, look at here. Amen. I don't know. I got to make sure Jack the Rip ain't in here. I don't know who's in here tonight. Amen. But uh, how many glad to be in the house? How many glad to God be, to God be the glory? Our fourth night, our fourth Thursday night, we're almost to the finish line. Bless the Lord. And many of you have been here every single solitary night, every Thursday night that we have engaged. And we're grateful for God's vessels that have come to minister to us in their own way. Amen. Amen. To minister to us. The Word of God. I'm so very glad to have Dr. Jerry Carter uh, from Jersey, amen, the Calvary Church to be here to share with us once again. Uh, he came and shared last year. I wanted him to come back, and he consented so graciously. I believe that he is one of God's skilled surgeons of the Word of God, amen, amen. Paul says that we're to skillfully, to rightfully divide the word of truth. And truly on last year, as he preached and shared, our cup ran, mine did, my cup and my plate. Glory to God, it ran over. And we've also been blessed by various worship leaders uh, throughout this summer of preaching. And uh, this young man who is going to lead us into worship tonight, matter of fact, I've preached for his father many times in Fernandina. He was knee-high to a grasshopper when I was going there to preach, and he was singing and preaching then as a, as a little kid, went to FAMU, uh, had some health challenges, but God has used him in so many ways to share the gospel in song. And so I wanted him to come and to share. Actually, when he was at FAM, I wanted them to come, but uh, I thought it not robbery to bring him out. I know his father very well. Uh, uh, Pastor Bolden, Sr., Darian Bolden, Sr., and this is his son, the, the fruit of his loins, his posterity. And so our worship leader for tonight, I want you to put it together, is Darian Bolden, Jr., our guest preacher, Dr. Jerry Carter. Come on, let's give him a hope. Well, there it is. Well, praise the Lord, anybody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I believe that's the action. Is there anybody happy to be at the house of the Lord tonight just one more time? Come on, if you're not too many, you can clap your hands and let's have a little bit of church. Anybody believe that God is still providing all of your needs and you shall not want? Everybody clap your hands. One more time, everybody clap your hands. Paul says this. Will you be my light when I cannot see? When I can't take another step, Lord, would you carry me? When I've lost my fight, will you be my strength? Will you set me at a table in the presence of my enemies? Shall I want? I shall not want. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the family, and I shall not want. Shall not want. I shall not want. Oh, my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not want. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. I shall not want. No. I like this next verse. I will live my life to where my help comes from. And I won't be afraid of the shadow because I'll see the sun. And I will not stop when the way is hard. Because the green only grows in the valley and that's where you are. This is my testimony. I shall not. I shall not want. No, I shall. I shall not want. 
and your mercy. Yeah, I got everything that I need. Your goodness and your mercy. Everybody say it with me. Got everything that I need. Oh, your goodness and your mercy. I got everything. Got everything that I need. Your goodness and your mercy. I got everything. Got everything that I need. Your goodness and your mercy. Yeah, I got everything. Got everything that I need. Your goodness and your mercy.
Come on, what's the highest praise tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah means praise. So that means when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I shouldn't have to be pumped and primed. I ought to give him hallelujah. I ought to give him my worship. I ought to bless his name. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? If you're not too mean, as we get ready to saturate this house with worship, as we prepare for the word of God tonight, can you get something on your mind that the Lord has done for you? And just slip your hands up for the next 10 seconds and just begin to talk to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. There's nobody like you, Jesus. We give you glory. We invite you in this house tonight. That it is. Song. Repeat after me.
fill the house with that sound tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ha Come on, can we break the instruments tonight and create an atmosphere of worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you all of our praise. Oh, hallelujah. We get ready to hear from the word of God. Every hand lifted. No music all over the room. Every hand lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God, we say. You've been better than us, and we can never be to ourselves, we say. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, sis, this is a summer revival. Can we testify what we need from the Lord? Well, Lord, we need. Anybody need him like water needs a grass? Lord, we need you. Ooh, Lord, we need you. Lord. As we take our seats one last time, everybody say hallelujah. Head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <laughs> Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we give your name praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for this privilege of word and worship. And pray now that you would speak to us as you've already been speaking on tonight. Create some space for your word. Break up the fallow ground that we may bring forth fruit in the days to come. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in this day. Amen. Let me, let me try that again. This is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> I think I mentioned to you last year that if, if God has grace enough to make the day, we ought to have sense enough to rejoice and be glad in this day. Uh, Dr. Williams, thank you so much for allowing me to share again in worship here at Hopewell Church. Um, God is a great God and greatly to be praised. I'm just uh, thoroughly enriched by what's happening in this ministry, this church, just by, just by observation. And much of it has to do with the amazing leader that you have here and your pastor. Yeah. Yeah. He has quickly become a real brother to me and I thank you uh, for that brotherhood and for relationship that's being formed and forged. And once again, just for the, the ministry that's going on here at Hopewell Church. Everywhere I go across the United States, I mention this church and this pastor, and they know y'all. I just want y'all to know. 
and uh, for the incredible music tonight. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all doing that. Yep, thank you. Uh, for just a few moments from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, that is in the Bible, Lamentations. If you turn there, book of Lamentations, chapter 3. And I'd like to begin reading at verse 19 from the New International Version. Yeah. Familiar passage of scripture. Verse 19, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet, this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love or mercies, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. I want to talk tonight from the subject, what I need to say to myself. What I need to say to myself. I think it was 2010 when um, a collection of Nelson Mandela's uh, diary entries, letters, and other writings were published, were compiled, and the title of the book was Conversations with Myself. This is not the, it's not the book of some hero who has no ups and downs. Matter of fact, it's the, uh, it's, it, it's the book of one who is very human, who, who travels across the emotional spectrum of highs and lows, tragedies and triumphs. Yeah, courage and fears, frustration and anticipation. And when you read the book, what you discover is that the format is that most of it is Nelson Mandela talking to himself. He engages in conversation with himself as he has to uh, deal with being hunted down during his anti apartheid activity and then as he was incarcerated and then as he had to stand on the world stage he, he kind of made it clear that the only reason he made it through any of those seasons is because he learned the art of self-talk mm -hmm. and, and to engage in self-talk to some may seem like lunacy but the truth of the matter is, you can keep yourself from going crazy if you learn how to talk to yourself. Uh, the writer of Lamentations would probably have the same testimony as Nelson Mandela. Yep, the writer of Lamentations is probably the pained, passionate prophet Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah uh, outlines and delineates what was going to happen and what did happen in terms of exile. Lamentations is the sequel to the book of Jeremiah that talks about how the prophet feels about what happens. Yep, yep, yep. The prophet in Lamentations is very honest about his emotional state as a result of what has happened in his homeland. He, he's, he's, he's torn, he's, he's, he's kind of lamenting over the fact that his people have been deported and the holy places have been desecrated. And as a result of that, he's honest about how he feels. He's frustrated with even with God. Feels like God has left them or doesn't care at worst or has left them at best, he is honest about how he feels. This is the prophet 
who speaks in the book of Lamentations. This is the one, this is the one who at one time occupied the pulpit, is now a resident of the valley. Yeah, this is the one who once bragged and boasted on Jehovah, is now disgusted with Jehovah. Look at what he says. He says, I've seen uh, the affliction of the rod of your wrath. I dwell in darkness. I feel like one who's on the pathway and has been set up for the bear or the lion to devour me. He says, I feel like I've been walled in. I feel like I am surrounded. Listen to, this is the prophet that's talking. He says, I feel like God has set me up as a target. And all the arrows of affliction are now being hurled in my direction. This is the, pro understand, this is not an atheist. This is not an agnostic. This is the prophet that's talking like this. Yeah, this ain't nobody on the street corner. This is the one who Sunday after Sunday who gets up and declares the word of God. This is the pastor who's feeling like this. And, and, and he's probably not, this prophet Jeremiah is probably not the last one to have felt this way. If we were honest on tonight, we would admit that we have seasons where we just get frustrated and disgusted with the world in which we live. A, a world that's changing at such a rapid pace, all of us feel like lamenting sometimes. A world where it feels like sicknesses and viruses are always waiting around the corner. A world characterized, yes, by political partisanship. Republicans on one side, Democrats on the other side. Anybody ever just get disgusted with the world in which you live? Okay, okay, maybe not the world, but some of us have had issues with your world, the world that you live. I just need three honest people here on tonight who would admit with me, Pastor, I've been there. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I felt like I did not even belong in the world and didn't want to belong in the world in which that's why tonight I'm glad that Lamentations is in the Bible. Yep, 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 yep. Because whatever else it says is that even those who are followers of the Lamb of God have seasons and have space to express our emotional despondency. Okay, I know we live in a Christian culture that says we always ought to feel blessed and I'm too blessed to be stressed, but I just need six honest people in here who would admit to me that I'm glad that Lamentations is in the Bible. In America, we're so addicted to happiness that we don't even give people room and space to be honest about sorrow and frustration. We would rather be, we would rather fake happiness than to be real about our lamentation. Look, look, the book of Lamentations is in the Bible to let somebody know that it's not a lack of faith for you to lament what's going on in your life, for you to cry, for you not to always feel like waving your hand, it's all right. <laughs> Exodus is in the Bible, Revelation's in the Bible, but I'm glad Lamentations is in the Bible. Because up to this point in chapter 3, in, in going through verse 19, the, the prophet is really honest about how he feels. But watch it. The moment you get to verse 21, there's a shift. Yep, all of a sudden, the, the mood of despair is replaced by beautiful affirmation. There's a shift in verse 21 where the prophet uh, uh, starts talking to himself. Up to this point, the prophet has simply been listening to himself. Hmm. Okay, I thought I was in church. Um, you, you can only listen to yourself for so long. At some point, you got to move from listening to you to talking to you. Because if all you do is listen to yourself, you will have a pity party all day long. At some point, you got to look at yourself and talk to yourself and tell yourself what you need to hear. 
Yeah, yeah. If all you do is listen to yourself, you'll always be a child of experience, but never a child of expectation. And at some point on time, I came all the way from New Jersey to challenge Hopewell Church tonight to stop just listening to you and stop, start talking to, look at what he says. He says, yet. <laughs> I love it. Yet. Yeah, he doesn't wait for anybody else to supply his yet. You got to know how to supply your own yet. Ooh, yeah, you got to know how to supply your, come here, Job. Job said, um, though he slay me. Come on, do I have two Bible readers in here? Yet will I trust in him. Come here, prophet Habakkuk. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, and although there are no grapes on the vine, and although there are no olives on the trees, and although there's no wheat in the field, and although there are no sheep that are flocking, and although there are no cattle in the herd, yet, I will rejoice. Look, 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 look. You got to know when nobody else will, you got to know how to supply your own yet. Yet means I'm rebelling against how I feel. I'm rebelling against my circumstances. And even if I don't feel like waving my hand, I'm going to wave my hand anyway. Even if I don't feel like opening my mouth, I'm going to open my mouth anyway and give God the sacrifice of praise tonight because I am supplying my own yet. He says, yet I will. He said, yet, 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 so, so, something happened to me. Um, when I start thinking, when I call certain things to mind. It's, it's, it's interesting that the, uh, the writer who had been lamenting is now engaging in faith talk. Faith talk doesn't always displace lamentation, but it's meant to live in tension with it. Hmm. That, that, that flies in the face. Because we think that the moment you start talking faith talk, you will displace all doubt and you will displace all sorrow. But can I just keep it real on tonight that faith talk doesn't always displace lamentation, but it's meant to live in tension with it. Okay, and the reason I know that is because right after this prophet engages in self-talk in chapter 3, he goes right back to lamenting. Because that's the, how it goes sometimes. Yep, yep, yep. You can be in one place in church. The moment you get in your car, you're right back with the doubt. And then you start talking to yourself again. And you're in the faith talk. Then you're back in frustration. Then you're with faith talk. Then you're with lamentation. Come on, y'all. Please, please. I'm just begging y'all to be honest with me tonight. Anybody go back and forth between what you know but what you feel? You go back and forth between trusting God's word then paying more attention to your circumstances. Faith talk is not always meant to displace lamentation but it's meant to live in tension with it he says yet I call this to mind and I have hope because faith talk gives birth to hope mm -hmm. it gives birth to it faith comes by hearing by the word of God and that hearing is not just always hearing from other people but it's hearing you talk to you. And, and the prophet says, this is the only way I'm making it through this crazy season of lamentations. I have learned how to say the right things to myself. And I want people tonight in Hopewell to know when you are in a season of lament, there are certain things you got to know how to say to yourself. Come on, come on, come on. There are certain things you have, you got to know how to talk. To tell us, prophet, what is it that we may, need to remind ourselves of? He said, well, first of all, when you're in a season of lament, you have to remind yourself of the fruitfulness of God's mercy. Please wake up and hear me here. Yeah. The fruit, the, the evidence or the fruitfulness of God's mercy. He said, I know God has been merciful to me. And, and, and the fruitfulness or the evidence of God's mercy is that I'm here. I got three people. Okay, let me try it again. The main fruitfulness or the main evidence that God is merciful is that I'm here. 
uh uh-uh. Okay, third time. The, the greatest piece of evidence that God is merciful is the fact that I'm present in church tonight. Okay, um, the prophet says, I know about God's mercies by the fact that I, we have survived. I know, he says, that we've been through some stuff, talking about he and the people of Israel. I know we've been through some stuff, and I know exile has stripped us of a whole lot. But the truth of the matter is, it could have been worse had it not been for God's mercies. And so the prophet has learned how to rejoice in the remnant that's left. A whole lot had been stripped by Babylonian exile. But he looks around and he stops complaining about what is absent and starts focusing on what's present. And what's present is a remnant. He teaches us tonight that you got to know how to shout about the remnant. The remnant is what's left over after you have taken into consideration what you have lost. The remnant is the joy you have left. The remnant is the peace you have left. The remnant is the money you have left. The remnant is the health you have left after the bout with cancer. Anybody here know how to rejoice about what you have left? Um, they were having testimony service at a nursing home, and some of the residents there were testifying about how uh, they've been blessed with this bountiful Social Security check that comes in monthly. And then some of them were testifying about how their families visit them uh, week after week. But there was one old lady in a wheelchair over in the corner who couldn't testify about any money coming in because she didn't have any money. She couldn't testify about anybody visiting her because nobody ever came to see her. But she says, I want to raise my hand today and testify about how blessed I am. And everybody was shocked that she was testifying and they uh, kind of looked at her. She said, I know y'all looking at me wondering about what my blessing is. She said, my blessing is that I have two teeth. I have one on the top and one on the bottom and they both meet. <laughs> You got to know how to shout and rejoice in what you have, in what you have left. Am I looking at anybody here who says, I've lost some stuff. I've been through some stuff, but tonight I want to bless him for the remnant. If it ain't but two teeth, I'm going to lift up holy hands for that right Look, 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 he says, I know about God's mercies and the fact that I am still here. He said, I know I should have been gone. He said, it is, it is of the Lord's mercies. Do you see it? That we are not consumed. It is by the Lord's hesed, God's kindness. I didn't make it this far, so says the prophet, because I was slick and sly. He said, I didn't make it because of, of, of the assets that I have in my portfolio. <laughs> he said, I didn't make it because of the degrees that I have on my wall. I made it because his mercy kept me when I really should have been fit. If you knew some about my craziness, if you knew about my inconsistencies, if you knew about my inclinations and my proclivities, you would shout for me on tonight because you would agree that it's of the Lord's mercies that I am not consumed. Come on, come on, come on. Do I have five people in here who can testify? Let me preach over here. Now, y'all not help me on that side. Anybody over here says, Pastor, you're looking at somebody, and I know that if it had not been for his mercy, I would have been consumed. <laughs> he said, whenever you're in the season of lamentation, here's the point. You, first of all, need to remind yourself of the fruitfulness of God's mercy. But then you also need to remind yourself of the freshness of God's mercies. Can I preach what's in the Bible? He said, you need to remind yourself of the freshness because uh, God is a God who's, uh, stay, who, who extends steadfast love to us and who is compassionate. Steadfast love, according to verse 22, compassions, verse 23, and steadfast love has to do with God's commitment to us. Compassions speaks of God's feelings about us. 
God is committed to us and he likes us. <laughs> because not everything you're committed to do you like. Somebody ought to wake up and hear me here. I, ooh, I lost my crowd here the whole world. Look, look, but, but, but God is committed to you and he feels good about you. Second time, let me try. God is committed to you. He's covenantly committed to you, and emotionally, he likes you. Okay, y'all, look, he's covenantly committed to you, and he enjoys you. 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 Me. You. As unlikable as you can be, as irascible and hard to get along and cantankerous as you, he actually like he, uh, uh, look, he's committed to me, and he actually likes me. And his commitment to me and his emotions about me are new every morning. When the prophet, can I preach what's here? When the prophet says that his mercies are new every morning, they're not new in the sense of being freshly created, but they're new in the sense of being freshly experienced. Come here. Come here. One, two, three, four, five. Look, mercy is not new every morning in the sense that it was, it was just now created. But it's new in the sense that it might be old mercy, but I experience it afresh every time I get up. Look, 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 look. The, 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 the perfect ocular example is when the children of Israel were, were, were journeying through the wilderness and they needed something to eat. And the Lord would bless them with manna from on high. And they were told, don't pack up. Don't store up the manna. Don't put it in the freezer. Don't put it in any Ziploc bags. And keep it for tomorrow. He said, because I'm blessing you with fresh manna today. And I'm going to give you some fresh manna tomorrow. Because yesterday's manna won't be enough for tomorrow's hunger. So I'm giving you fresh manna. Can I preach this on tonight? The same way he blessed them with fresh manna, he blesses you with fresh mercy. And the reason why he blesses you and I with fresh mercy is because I have fresh mess. Okay, and yesterday's mercy won't help me with today's mess. Okay. And, and, and yesterday's mercy, not only do I need because of my fresh mess, but I also make fresh mistakes. Anybody here make fresh mistakes? Come on, I know y'all holy on tonight, but somebody here messed up today. And what I love about it is he gives me fresh mercy for, what is today? Thursday. And when I get up on Friday, I'm going to run into some fresh mercy because I'm going to have some fresh mess. And I'm going to make some fresh mistakes. Every day, can I preach this on tonight? Every day is the ending of the night. Every day brings fresh fulfillment. Every day brings fresh peace. Every day brings fresh joy. Every day brings fresh satisfaction. God don't believe in day old mercy. It's fresh mercy. Your sin gets old to you, but it doesn't get old to him because it is fresh mercy. <laughs> Even if you're not a shouter, just blink an eye. Some of y'all ain't move all worship. Just, just blink an eye. You don't have to shout. But just, just, just tell him, thank you for fresh. When you're in, all I'm trying to tell you, Pat, is that, is that when you're in a season of lament, and if you haven't been there, just keep living. The loss of a loved one will put you in a season of lament. And in that season, you need to remind yourself of what? First of all, the fruitfulness of God's mercy. Then what else? You need to remind yourself of the freshness of his mercy. But then watch it. You need to remind yourself of the faithfulness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of his mercy. Because suddenly the prophet who had been talking about God, now talks to God. He had been talking, he had been testifying about this 
God and how, you know, uh, God's mercies are new every morning. And then suddenly he says, um, great is your faithfulness. Okay, you missed that. Up to that point, he had been testifying about God. But now when it comes to talking about faithfulness, he said, God, I can't talk about you no more. I got to talk to you. So I've moved from testimony to worship. <laughs> okay, what makes your experience worship is you don't simply talk about God, but you start talking to him. To say, God, uh, he is good, that's testimony. To say, God, you are good, that's worship. And at some point, when you come to church, you move from testimony to worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, 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 when the prophet starts thinking about the attributes of God, his fellowship is reinvig reinvigorated and re-inspired. The one who had been complaining about God being absent is now talking to that God. Yep. Talking about how faith, can I talk about his faithfulness on tonight? I promise you I'm almost done. To say God is faithful is to say God is stable. <laughs> let, me, let me try it because I know it, to, to say God is faithful carries the connotation that God is stable in a world of stable instability and in a world of consistent inconsistency I need something I can count on I need somebody I can count on I need something I can stand on okay the psalmist said God is our refuge and our strength very present help in trouble he says, and though the mountains be removed, and though the earth be moved, though the mountains be cast forth into the sea, he says, I still have a God who is stable. Every day something is changing. Every day something is being upgraded. Jehovah can't be upgraded. <laughs> he is the fullness of who he is. He cannot be made any better. To say God is faithful hmm, is to say God is stable. To say God is faithful is to say that he's a God of one heart, which means his heart won't change on you. The heart is characterized by capriciousness, which means one day I, I, I like you, one day I don't. Uh, one day I love you, one day I can't stand you. My heart goes, but I, I serve a God whose heart doesn't change on me. No matter how crazy I act. No matter how many times I disobey his will, his heart will not change on me. To say God is faithful is to say he's the God of a man. I don't have time to talk about it, but, but, but in the Hebrew, the word for a man and faithful is really the same word. So every time you end your prayers by saying amen, you're saying I'm committed, I'm committing what I just prayed about to the faithfulness of God. Everything I just, whenever you say amen, you're saying everything I just said, I'm putting it at the feet of God's faithfulness. And I'm glad on tonight that I serve a God who is faithful. The prophet didn't just discover God was just now being faithful, but he was saying even when I was fussing at God, he was faithful. Even when I thought God had left me, God was faithful. Even when I didn't have a consciousness of God, God was faithful. Even when I was out there snorting and smoking everything, God had, was faithful. God is faithful to you even when you're not faithful to him. Even when I'm up and down with God, I serve a God who is faithful. Good night. May the Lord bless you real good. But when you're in a season of lament, there are some things you got to remind yourself of. You have to remind yourself. You got to remind yourself of God's mercy. You got to remind yourself of how merciful God is, the fruitfulness of his mercy, the freshness of his mercy, the faithfulness of his mercy. Then you got to remind yourself, and I take my seat, of the fullness of his mercy. <laughs> Do you see it? He says, he says, I say to myself, right there in verse 24, the Lord is my portion. Do you see it? He says, I say to myself, during seasons of lament, that the Lord is my portion. Mm. Carries the whole idea of uh, when the children of Israel entered the promised land 
and, and, and they were uh, allotted certain portions of land. Each tribe, you get this much land. That tribe, you get that much land. Every tribe got a plot of land for the sake of agriculture and prosperity, except for one tribe. That was the tribe, you got it, of Levi. And the Lord looked at the tribe of Levi and said, I am your portion. <laughs> Somebody help me here. Everybody else got land. Levi got the Lord. And, and it may seem like Levi got the short end of the stick. But, 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 but I would love to be in the shoes of the tribe of Levi because other tribes got the land. Levi got the owner of the land. And I'd rather have the own, look, if I have the Lord, then I have everything that comes with him. Good night, and may the Lord bless you real good. But, but somebody ought to know that the Lord is your portion. And when you have him, you have everything that comes along with the Lord. Yeah, 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 thou, my, my everlasting portion. Yeah, more than friends or life to me. Yeah, all along my pilgrim's journey. Savior, walk close to me. Yeah, is there anybody here who has the testimony that the Lord is your portion? Well, the prophet comes to the conclusion that when he remembers, yeah, the fruitfulness of mercy and the freshness and the faithfulness and the fullness of God's mercy, he says, then I have hope. He said, the only reason that I've made it through this season of lamentation is because I've learned how to talk to myself. I've learned how to say the right things to myself. Do I have any witnesses here that can confirm with me that when you talk the right stuff to you, you can make it through a season of lamentation? I need a few witnesses here. Come here, David. David said when I was in the land of Ziklag, and everybody wanted to stone me because families had been abducted, yet the village had been burned down and nobody was on my side. I had to learn how to encourage myself in the Lord. Come here, woman who had a bleeding problem. Do I have a Bible reader here? For 12 long years, the only reason she made it to Jesus because she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, she learned how to talk to herself. Come here, prodigal son. He says, I was in the hog pen, and I came to myself, and I said, wait a minute. How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? The only reason he made it back home is because he learned how to talk to himself. You remember when Jesus was on the cross, hung high and stretched wide. He talked to a, a whole lot of different parties. He talked to his father when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, he talked to the thief that was on his side. He said, I tell you, that today you'll be with me in paradise. He talked to his mother and said, woman, behold thy son. He talked to John. He said, son, behold your mother. All of that is good. But the only reason he made it on the cross is because he talked to himself when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was really quoting Psalm 22 talking to himself he said it is finished he was talking to himself he said I thirst he was talking to himself I gotta leave you now but every now and then you gotta learn how to point to yourself and say the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear you gotta talk to yourself and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta talk to yourself and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Touch your neighbor, look at him in the eye and tell him I've learned how to 
talk to myself. I made it because I know how to talk to myself. Yeah, yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great, 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 great. Yeah, he's great on tonight. Anybody know he's faithful on tonight? Anybody know we serve a faithful God on tonight? In seasons of lament, in seasons of lament, and lament can hit you, all it takes is one visit to the doctor. All it takes is one phone call. All it takes is one discovery concerning your child or your grandchild. All it takes is one pink slip. And life will catapult you into a season of lament. The blessing is that the book of Lamentations is in the Bible, which means God gives you space to be honest with what I call emotional regurgitation. When you are honest about how you, so much of what goes on in Christian faith and Christian churches and gospel music is really dishonest. I'm not promising everybody here that this is your season. Oh, I may never get back. I, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't promise you on next week is going to be your breakthrough. I don't know. You may have to walk in some lamp in some lament for a while. I don't know. But I do know one thing. That God's mercy will keep you. That I can promise you. And I can promise you that that mercy will be fresh every morning. And I can promise you that God will be faithful with that mercy. And then I can promise you that, 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 he, that he himself will be your portion. He will fill you up even when you feel empty. And, and this is the and Doc, this is the thing that got me about this whole Lamentation chapter 3. That kind of talk is not always meant to displace sorrow but it's meant to live in tension with it. You, you probably won't, that probably won't register for a couple weeks. No, seriously, I'm not being condescending or anything because that took me even longer than a couple weeks to really get because I, I thought all you got to do is just talk. Just, 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 just talk some faith talk and all your doubt is gone. All of your fears are gone. Yeah, that sounds good. We sing it, we preach it, we talk it, but let's just be real on tonight. Grief and lamentation sometimes stick with you. And the only reason why some of you have survived is because your faith talk enables you to live in tension with it. Yeah, great is your mercy. Great is your mercy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know his mercy is great on tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sing that. Let's sing that. Great is your mercy. Great is your mercy. See your loving kindness, your tender mercy. See, I see day after day, day after day. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Forever faithful. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. Just want to pray. God, we thank you for safe space to be honest on tonight. Thank you for safe space. And God, we pray that you would continue to transform our churches into places where we can feel safe about being real. Lord, because we admit we don't always feel the way we act like we feel. And Lord, some of us are afraid to embrace our feelings because everybody around us seems like they're doing so well and they're so happy and they're so joyous. But tonight, we thank you for safe space to be real. And Lord, if we were to be real on tonight, we would admit that we have some seasons and somebody looking at me right now is in a season of lament. Somebody looking at me right now is in a season of lament, Lord. I don't know who it is. But we pray tonight that you would begin to encourage their hearts, encourage souls, change some circumstances. But even while you're changing the circumstances, just show somebody mercy. Show somebody how blessed they are by the fact that they're just here. And then remind us just how fresh that mercy is. And remind us of how faithful you are, God. Keep somebody tonight. Keep somebody tonight. Lord, you're a mighty good keeper. You've kept us down through the years. You've kept us. And so, God, tonight we pray that you would transform somebody's heart, somebody's mind. Even if somebody here doesn't know you, free pardon of sins, lead them to relationship with Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that you are a God who can handle our complaints. We thank you, you are a God who can handle our laments. Even when the church can't handle it, you can handle it. Even when family can't handle it, you can handle it. We thank you that we don't have to sanitize our prayers. We don't have to clean up our prayers. We can come to you with the honesty of how we're really feeling. And so we thank you tonight we thank you that you are a God who will ultimately give us victory. You are a God who will ultimately give us breakthrough. You are a God who will ultimately give us blessing. But along the way, you'll simply keep us until we get there. We love you. We give you glory. And we lift up everybody in this house right now, those who may be joining in virtually. God, we just lift up everybody to put them in your hands. This is your hour. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, would you thank God for his manservant? Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's just surgical preaching. That's what that is. That's surgical. That's a message that you got to go back and listen to. Not just one time, but several times. <laughs> Glory to God. Did that bless anybody tonight? Did that... Jerry Carter was on assignment tonight. He came to preach. And God knows he did that tonight. Amen. What I need to tell myself. You know what's interesting? One of the things that's interesting in life is that as long as as we talk to people publicly and verbally to encourage them, that's okay. As long as we're encouraging someone else verbally and vocally, you don't see that as being crazy. 
But as soon as you start talking to yourself, you know what folks said? Oh, he, he's crazy. And you know what he was telling us tonight? Is sometimes you have to talk to yourself not because you are crazy, but you got to talk to yourself to keep you from going crazy. <laughs> Things I've got to tell myself. And I love it. You got to remind yourself of the freshness of God's mercy. Wow. I like that, the freshness of God's mercy. You know what he said? It's, it's, it's not, it's not an old mercy. It's just a new experience. It's a new experience. And I need that new experience for my new mess and my new mistakes. Do I have a witness? The freshness. But I like that the fruitfulness of it, it produces something in our life. He talked about the fullness of it and the faithfulness of it. God is faithful to us. And he don't, he might not like my ways, but he likes me. <laughs> I like that. Because sometimes we are not likable. If the truth be as safe as we are, sometimes your spouse don't like you. You heard it. <laughs> but aren't you glad that God is faithful? He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today. Never oscillates, never vacillates. Same God, always there. And then I'm grateful that he says God, just like Genesis is in the Bible, Revelation is in the Bible, Lamentation is also in the Bible. David said this on several times, I cried out to the Lord. He inclined his ear to my supplication. And if David cried, that means I can cry as well. And aren't you glad that we serve a God who will hear our prayer, hear our cry, Incline his ear to our supplication. Amen. He goes from talking about God to talking to God. David did the same thing in Psalm 23. He goes from talking about God to talking to God. And every now and then we find ourselves in that same place. But so many powerful nuggets in that word tonight. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Wow. That was round four, y'all. Amen. Round four, round four. We've been blessed this summer, haven't we? Amen. Well, listen, if you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, for those of you who are streaming, I want to invite you to go to joinhopewell.com forward slash change me. For those of you who are present, you can go there as well counselors will contact you. It's important to have a meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so thank God for this word that has encouraged our heart. We're going to receive our offering and then we're going to leave. Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving and sharing. Take our gifts and be glorified by them. It is our prayer we seal this prayer. It is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. And the church said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Listen, for those of you who need an envelope, please be so kind to raise your hand. The ushers will assist you. Um, once you receive your offertory, or once you receive your envelope, place your offertory in the envelope. Hold it up again. The ushers will come and retrieve it. Uh, there are several other ways that you can give to our church. You can text my hope well at 833-313-4867. You can download the Hopewell app on your mobile device. You can also send it in through snail mail to Hopewell Church, 3990 Loretta Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32223. Those are the various ways 
and means that you can give to our church. And so for those of you who are online, you can follow um, that same directive and give and share and to sow prayerfully into good ground and it will bring forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And so we're, we're, we're just honored. I'm just blessed. This has been just a wonderful summer of preaching. Amen. Now we're, we're going to close out next Thursday night. Uh, Dr. Ralph West, our office was contacted. He won't be able to come. There is a conflict that came up later on. But one of the things that I've done is extended to him the opportunity to come back. I want you got to hear if you have not heard Dr. Ralph West, you have missed one heaven of a preacher. You really have. He is one of what I believe God's choice vessels. And so we'll be back next Thursday. We're going to have a ram in the bush. We're, we're, we're searching high and low. But you come out, and we're going we're gonna to come out, and we're going to close out just like we started. We're going to come, and we're going to praise God. We're going to worship God. We'll get a stand in somebody. And that person may be the person that should have been here all along. So, but uh, you just pray and uh, we trust God uh, to do what God always does. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm so honored to have Minister Darian Bo. Did he bless us tonight? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now we, <laughs> we had Pastor Philip Mercer here uh, last uh, last Thursday, who was our worship leader, I told you that he, he was uh, an old man in a young man's body, Philip Mercer. Well, you see that Minister Darian Bolden is the same. That's, them, them boys, <laughs> them boys been raised in them Baptist churches. They are young men, but they got that old man spirit. Amen. And now they know how to do that new stuff, but now that old stuff, Amen. I mean, it's like a hand in glove. But I, did he bless us tonight, though? Glad to have you, Darren. Glad to have you to come out. Well, come on, every, everyone stand. We're getting out at, at our normal time by the grace of God. Were we blessed tonight by the preacher? Yeah, man. Awesome. You're awesome, Hopewell. We thank you for coming. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, keep his people. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said... Amen. God bless you. Be safe as you travel and journey home.